norm can be said to be a collection of four things one the constitutional law and constitutional law is the most important law the most important law it is the apex law the supreme law if any law is inconsistent with the provisions of constitution that law is out it will be declared to be out invalid and this declaration will be generally by the honorable supreme court so the most important law is the constitutional law second is the set of laws l a w s laws which are called acts these are also called statutes so these acts are generally passed by the legislature the word legislature includes the parliament and the legislative assemblies and legislative councils in the states the word legislature i don't want to include jurisprudence here because it will make things complicated for the persons who want it in very easy language please note that as to which law can be passed by whom is written in the constitution in the seventh schedule of the constitution there are three beasts union beast state beast and concurrent beast in relation to matters which are written in the union beast only the parliament can pass laws in relation to matters which are written in the state list only the state legislatures can pass law and in relation to matters which are written in the concurrent list of the seventh schedule of the constitution both the parliament as well as state legislatures can pass laws so first is the constitutional law most important second the statutory laws and please note statutory laws or statutes means the acts the laws which are passed by the parliament as well as by the legislatures of the state after that the third category of laws is the supreme court laid down law which is called case law this case law is also called precedents precedents whenever there is any difficulty in the interpretation of the constitution or of the statutes which means acts of the parliament and legislative assemblies and councils whenever there is any difficulty in the interpretation of these laws the supreme court tells when the matter comes before the supreme court when the matter comes before the supreme court the supreme court tells as to what is the correct interpretation of the law which means in case there is any ambiguity any vagueness something that is unclear the supreme court lays down tells as to what is the correct matlab interpretation of that sentence or of that word that is called the case law also called precedents the fourth type of law are the rules and regulations by laws framed when the act gives such power to the government if there is any such power it is written in the act itself in the second type of law statutes acts that the government as and when required can pass can frame rules and regulations on any particular matter which is written in the statute in the act so generally these are the four types of laws the fifth type of law is generally you know personal laws in relation to muslim law or in relation to hindu law which is generally not prepared as a code or as an act that is the fifth type sometimes even traditions some traditions very rarely have the force of law 
in some remote areas of uh, tribal parts of the country. So, the fifth type is the personal law, such as Muslim personal law for their succession, Hindu law. And these laws are generally not codified. Okay. They are different for different religions at times. They are different for different tribes or different aspects of uh, remote life sometimes. So these are generally the five types of laws. Law can also be seen as either substantive law or procedural law. Substantive law tells as to what is right and wrong. Procedural law tells as to what the procedure should be in a particular situation. Code is a collection of many laws. And this word code is used for criminal procedure code, Indian penal code, civil procedure code, land revenue code and some other codes. The word code in law is a collection of laws. And the word code is generally used when many laws are taken together and published as one law. Okay, this is what the word code means. Now, the procedural laws generally applicable in India are the law of evidence, which is the Indian Evidence Act, the Civil Procedure Code and the Criminal Procedure Code. These are the procedural laws. There are very few provisions in the Criminal Procedure Code, especially relating to maintenance of wives, which give some substantive rights. In that sense, there is a small amount of substantive law in the Criminal Procedure Code. Similarly such in some other laws. So, generally the procedural laws deal with the procedure in any situation and substantive laws are the laws which tell about the rights and liabilities which means about the right and the wrong in any situation. I am sure this will be extremely useful to the law students. For understanding law, the eligibility that I feel is important is high level of reasoning skills and studiousness. May God bless you. Do well in life.